We welcome you to another Sunday School lesson. Sunday School is a blessing and gift from God. Joel was a prophet in Judah while King Joash reigned and when the people of Judah had become prosperous and complacent. Taking God for granted, they turned to self-centeredness, idolatry, and sin. The invasion of the land by the locust and the future invasion by a nation from the north, both Assyria and Babylon, pointed to a future judgment called the Day of the Lord. In Joel 2 12-17, the prophet called for God's people to repent with all their heart and demonstrate it with fasting and mourning. If they repented as God required, he will have compassion and spare them. In showing pity to Judah, God will restore to them what the army of locusts had taken away. Their repentance would also result in God responding to his people by sending them grain and new wine and oil that will fully satisfy them. Then God declared that as a result of the nation's repentance, the future invading army represented by the locusts will be dispersed and defeated. Our lesson text begins with verse 21 which says, Do not be afraid, land of Judah, be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. God told the people not to be afraid, although a number of disasters hit the land causing their devastation. In addition, invading armies had aided in destroying the land as part of God's judgment on Judah. Although the land was ruined, God commanded them to be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Just as God will do great things by restoring his people after he has judged them with the Babylonian captivity, he will also restore their land. When we learn that the Lord will do great things in and through our lives, we should be glad and rejoice even before he has done any great things. For we know that if God said it, it will happen. Verse 22 says, Do not be afraid you wild animals, for the pastures in the wilderness are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruit, the fig tree and the vine yield their riches. Both plant and animal life suffered because of the sin of man. As a result of Israel's disobedience, God pronounced judgment upon the nation which affected both animal and plant life in Israel. Even these creations cried to God, Joel 1.20, and now that cry is answered, and they are directed to be unafraid, because they shall have plenty of everything that their nature desires. First, God promised that the pastures which the locusts had left as bare as the wilderness, shall again become green. Second, God promised that fruit-bearing trees which dried up because of the destruction done to the land, shall again bear their fruit. When God restores the nation, both the fig tree and the vine shall fully yield their riches, meaning they will bear their fruit. The fruitfulness of these trees and vines was an indication that the people would live in plenty, peace, and safety. The destroyed land will be watered and made fruitful. Verse 23 says, Be glad, people of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains, because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains, as before. Since God will restore Judah, the people of Zion should rejoice in him. In addition to the promises God made in the previous verses, he gave another reason why the children of Zion should rejoice in the Lord their God. It was because God has given the rain that normally came in Israel during autumn or during the Jewish month of Tishri, which coincides with our September-October. The land was experiencing a drought because of the people's sins, and God had cut off this early rain. And to demonstrate his mercy, God said that he would send rain heavy enough to prepare the soil for planting new crops, but not heavy enough to cause floods and turn into calamity. This springtime rain prepared the ground for the harvest season. Because of the people's failure to follow God, he sent droughts which led to famine. But after the people repented and God restores them, the land would again experience normal rainy and dry seasons. Verse 24 says, The threshing floors will be filled with grain, the vats will overflow with new wine and oil. 
Not only would God send rain in its due seasons, the people would also once again experience fruitful crops. Those threshing floors where wheat was separated from the unusable chaff or husks, will once again be full of wheat. In addition, God said that the barrels used to catch the juice from the grapes, and the oil from olives after they were crushed or treaded on into the wine presses, would overflow. In the day of Judah's distress, the wine and oil were in miserable or disheartening condition, and the barns were empty. But a time would come when those vats would not be able to hold the amounts of juice from the wine, or grapes, and the olive oil. The point is that the land will yield her increase, and the people will enjoy it. Verse 25 says, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locust and the young locust, the other locusts and the locusts swarm, my great army that I sent among you. God judged Israel by bringing about a number of disasters in the land using different insects, like locust and the caterpillar, to devastate the land, Joel 1:4. Now the Lord reveal his grace that he would show to Israel, when he said and I will repay you the years that the locust have eaten, the cankerworm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. The phrase I will repay you applies to someone who violated another's property rights to make restitution. But in this case, God had not wronged anyone. It was injustice that he judged them, yet in his compassion and grace, God promised to make restitution to those who didn't deserve it just like the father of the prodigal son, who upon his son's return made up all that his son had lost through sin and foolishness and took him back into his family with joy. God's point was that a time would come when his people would be compensated with comfort and restoration, according to the years that they were afflicted. The people would have years of plenty, to balance the years of famine. Verse 26 says, You will have plenty to eat, until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you, never again will my people be shamed the people will have much to look forward to. God said that they shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied. The famines that struck the land would be reversed and replaced with plenty. Now, everyone would have more than enough to eat, and God will make their food nourishing and they will be satisfied or content with it. Then God declared that this reversal of fortunes will cause the people to praise the name of the Lord who worked wonders for them. The Lord deserved the people's praise because he was their God, and by his actions, the Lord glorifies his power, and shows that he can relieve his people in their distress, and that he will do it when they repent, even though their sins were great. When God deals graciously with poor sinners who return to him, they must acknowledge that he has dealt wondrously and does great things. In the last part of this verse, God said and my people shall never be ashamed. Certainly, the Israelites would be ashamed of their circumstances, suffering drought and famine and attacks by their enemies, especially when they were supposed to be God's people. But once God has done wonders and restored them to their covenant position, they would never, again, be ashamed. Our final verse says, Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other, never again will my people be shamed. Perhaps the people believed that since they were experiencing very bad situations, God had deserted them. But when God gives his people plenty again, and they are satisfied with it, he declared that you will know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. First, God reassured Israel that he was still with them even though they had deserted him and went to other gods. Second, he made it clear that he was Israel's God, and there was none else. Then God repeated what he said in the previous verse, and my people shall never be ashamed. In other words, when Israel once again recognized Jehovah as their only God, they would regain their reputation among other nations and not bear the shame of the heathen anymore. No more will Israel or their God be seen as unfaithful to one another, when they have returned to him to serve him only.
the wondrous things that God will do for his people, and the fact that he was in the midst of Israel, proves that the Lord is God, and there is none other. As the only wise and true God he kills and makes alive, wounds and he heals, he forms light and darkness, and he makes peace and creates evil or disasters. These things, among many others, prove that he is the God of Israel, a God in covenant with his people and a father to them. And as a father he both corrects his people when they offend him, and comforts them when they repent. God promises his presence. As he did with Israel, the Lord calls us to turn from our sinful ways and come back to him. Each of us should examine ourselves to see if there are some areas in which we may need to return to the Lord. The Lord is merciful, but he will not allow us to continue in waywardness without suffering consequences. This lesson should help us to see the value of repentance. If we are in the darkness of sin, we can anticipate divine judgment. However, there is the door of repentance that is always open because God has promised his presence. It leads us to the brightness of divine hope for all eternity. Like Israel, the choice is up to each of us. God promises his presence. 1. Believers are encouraged not to be afraid, knowing that God will do great things. Joel 2:21. Our trust is not foolish, for our God is both faithful and good. Do not doubt his plan because he knows all, and he has a perfect plan. 2. When God does his work of restoration, he will restore desolate lands as well as desolate people. Joel 2:22-24. When something is restored, it is always better than it was to begin with. God will take that which is broken and put it together again, and make it a better life, a better future for ourselves and our loved ones, than it was before. 3. When we repent of our sins, sometimes God will restore what we've lost as a result of sin, Joel 2.25. The harvests for these people had been wiped out for four years, but God restored the years that the locusts had eaten, by giving bumper harvests. God can restore lost years by multiplying your fruitfulness. 4. Every believer should be able to declare that God has done wondrous things for us, even though we have not always been true to him. Joel 2:26. God's purpose in saving us is to bring us back into right relationship with him, so that we may enjoy fellowship with him and tell others about what he's done. 5. Knowing that God is always with us, should cause us to never be ashamed of our faith. Joel 2.27 The scriptures say no one who has faith will be disappointed, because our powerful God will never leave us. We are truly glad you spent time to learn this lesson with us. We hope you are blessed and may share these with somebody else. Thank you very much, have a great week, and God bless you always. Dear brothers and sisters.